Okay, hello again. We're in the second part of um, of this workshop, and we're in the middle of a debate. And I'd like to contribute a bit to to the debate. And if we look at the situation from the dream that we should have in distance education, there's a lot of different routes that we can take. A lot of alternatives that we can take but the important thing is to have the dream to take distance education somewhere which will benefit our students naturally we'd have to look at the way we've been working make our modifications to be able to reach that dream there are people who think that just increasing the amount of courses that we have or increasing the amount of programs that we have in our institutions it is enough to bring uh, to bring distance education uh, to a different level and to me that's not enough it's not a question of quantity it's a question of quality and I think what we have to talk about is changing the way we run distance education and one of the big changes that we have to look at is lowering the cost of education we know that we're losing students because they don't have the money they don't have the funds to be able to study education is becoming increasingly expensive and we can't if we talk if we talk about social justice continue to let these costs rise in terms of higher education so what we have to look at is how to offer really high quality distance education, but at a lower cost. This, these are some of the obstacles that we have before us. These are some of the challenges that we have before us, but we're forced, we're really forced to look at this and try and tackle this so that distance education and technology and education, the, the whole education experience uh, can be enjoyed by, by a greater number of people. So to me, uh, increasing programs, increasing the amount of courses is not enough. We have to change the way we work. And this is something that we have to put on our agenda one of the ways to be able to deal naturally with the question of cost and at the same time increasing the quality of what we work is with the division of labor it's a question of understanding that we have the best people to do better things and that we need to reorganize ourselves in such a way so that we can increase our quality but at the same time increase the the efficiency so that we can have a distance education at a lower cost and one of the ways to lower cost is to just increase our reach if we go global and we have a lot of people in, enjoying this uh this this experience that we're offering we're able to to lower our costs but it means having that global vision and that's something that not many institutions have and not many institutions have this global vision to be able to expand uh, the offering and lower the cost naturally uh, we have to watch out because we want at the same time even though we want to globalize we also want to have a more personalized experience the personalization of education the customization of education is increasingly important and we can do this we can do this if we tackle this the right way naturally if we have a lower cost and if we have a more personalized education i think we'd have the incredible product that we're all searching for in distance education naturally when we talk about 
personalization, we're not talking about having experiences where it's only a one-to-one -one type of situation. And that means increasing costs. There are other ways to personalize. And when we talk about personalization, we can talk about getting people together, having it very social. Many times we associate personalized education with in, in, in a totally isolated uh, environment, and that's not the case. We're not talking about isolating students. What we're talking about is personalizing their educational experience. And that's something we have to work towards. And naturally, one of the ways to do that is to have personalized or contracts with students that would clarify what their learning needs are, we can classify the resources they're going to be using to get to, to meet their goals and naturally to submit the evidence of learning. And these learning contracts can be very, very individualized, but at the same time using the multiple resources that our institutions can offer. It's a different way of educating. It's a different way of meeting their needs and at the same time at a lower cost and with a more personalized experience. It's another way to do things. And we have to, we have, we have to think uh, ways of getting distance education to do this. That's the challenge. There's a challenge here that goes beyond just increasing course numbers and program numbers in our institutions. But the big but here is that we have to change the way we gather data. Because if we look at our institutions, we can identify where the student weaknesses are and where their strengths are. The problem is, is that we're not, we're not gathering this data. The way we organize ourselves as institutions, it does, does not promote the gathering and the classification and the use of this data to be able to create profiles where we can identify difficulties and strengths and work on them to be able to help the student meet their student goals. If we look at the transcripts, for example, which is what we submit as evidence of learning, um, many of these transcripts don't really tell us what the student knows. All we know is that the student may have gotten an A, a B, or a C in a course. But can we really tell what they learned from a transcript? We know, we know that's not the case. Nonetheless, we continue to do it. We continue with this tradition. So I think there is room for us to change. I think there is room for us to be able to say, hey, let's do things differently so that we can, ha we can meet the dream of distance education, which would be to have an offering which is more personalized and at a lower cost. These are some of the challenges that we have. These are some of the obstacles that we have before us, but we have to address them. And I hope that we can discuss how to address this better and how we can give a long term process to solve these problems through HETS. I think HETS is an excellent vehicle to be able to address these issues and to give a follow up to these issues. I guess we have here uh, topics that we can continue to discuss and hopefully we'll be initiating our discussions here and continuing with these discussions uh, in the future. Let's see what happens.